Hi guys, um, just to let you know, we're doing a live sports psychology talk for those joining in. Just waiting for Giselle to join before we introduce. I'll introduce Gruti so long. Yeah, Groot. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. That's good to hear. How is your day doing? Um, yeah, no, my day's been good. Um, got some training in, did a lot of my assignments, had a nap, so I'm feeling quite refreshed now. How was your day? It was good, thanks. I had a good training. Um, mm -hmm. so happy to be back at training and building up and starting to feel strong again. Um, yeah. it's the best feeling starting to lift heavy weights. And I'm sure you can agree that there's probably no better feeling like once you come from Germany, you feel like, Oh, I feel accomplished. Like, you know, you yes. target, you know, you're starting to like, um, I don't know, just, just like feel like, you know, all the hard work is starting to pay off. Um, mm -hmm. so that's yeah. how I feel at the moment. So very grateful for that. And do you feel that like all of the the banded accessory work you did during lockdown actually helped your training now getting okay. back into it? Definitely. You know, I was so surprised. I don't think just that. I think also all the sprints and plyometrics that we've been doing because it's um it's high intensity and you know it's not just about like uh, going through the flow. Like every plyometric movement you do is something that you would like in your mind say to yourself. I need to be as explosive as possible with every single rep, and this will then carry mm -hmm. over weight lifting. And I, I really surprised myself. Like within the first like two to three weeks, like I already started to feel like you know I'm starting to hit like my 80, 85 percent, um, like with my squats and stuff like that. And you know I'm starting to feel now like with my squats, like my core, my body, my explosiveness. Um, you know, James actually said today, you know, you're starting to look like your old self again. And it's so good to hear. And I think also, you know, um, the nutrition, you know, starting to eat a lot more. I think that's made a massive difference. Um, the mindset training. I think, you know, overall as a whole, working on yeah. myself and not taking that time as like total rest. You know, like some people say to themselves, you know, oh, I'll train when I can or like they train maybe twice a week and stuff like that because they don't have equipment. But I kind of had that motivation of like, all the work I'm putting in, um, I need to make sure that when weightlifting starts again, that I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> okay. oh, that's so awesome to hear. And it looks like you're smashing it on your videos. So it's so, it's so cool to see. Well, I can say the same for you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So for all our viewers that's joining, I want to say welcome Giselle to our all things sports psychology talk that we're doing today. Um, yeah. You know, guys, for those watching, please feel free to ask any questions during our live. We'll gladly answer them. Um, what we normally do is, like, if we see a question pop up, um, as soon as we finish that question, we answer that question um, because we want to also be there for you guys and get everyone involved and make it um, – we want to make it, like, active and we want to make it fun and we want to make it also educational. Um so yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. And yes, I mean, like, you know, we've done this now numerous weeks in a row and we're still going strong. Um, and back to the sports psychology side of things. I'm very excited. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, to get to our questions, um, one of our questions that we got, so Giselle, for you, um, this is from an athlete that is struggling to get their mindset right for lifting. Okay, so they asked, um, I'm struggling a lot with getting my mindset right for lifting. I don't know what to do because I know I can get the weight I want to get, but my mind doesn't let me. What recommendations would you give this person? Mm -hmm. So I was sort of by saying that weightlifting, you know, as much as it is a sport where, you know, you, you need to be strong, you need to be explosive, you need to be flexible, mobile, agile, you know, whatever – it's a very, very mentally taxing sport. A lot of it rides on the mental. So if you are, you know, doing weightlifting and you're not practicing your mental, you are going to see deficiencies in your training and in your progress as well. 
So I would say make it a habit to actually work on your mental. Like actually work on it actively. Put it in your training schedule. And what I mean by that is, you know, put two or three days aside to actually actually actively sit down and journal or meditate or visualize, you know, do affirmations, all of those things. Make it a part of your training because at the end of the day, you know, when you start off weightlifting, you know, it's your first week of weightlifting, you're not going to go there and expect to snatch 80 kilograms. You know, you're going to work your way up building all of those foundational skills and the mental aspect forms part of that foundation. Prepare yourself for it. Um, and one of the best pieces of advice I can give, especially for weightlifting, is visualization. Um, and it's actually so funny because, you know, a lot of the athletes that I've spoken to um, on my podcast have all spoken about visualization and they all come from completely different sports and backgrounds. So, you know, we spoke about it on the podcast. Um, I spoke to Eric Garbus, who's a, a Red Bull BMX rider. He spoke about visualization as well. And, you know, if you can see it in your mind, then recreating that in reality won't be that weird because you've, yeah. technically, you've technically done it, you know. Um, so I would definitely say practice that a lot more. Be active in that. Um, it is a skill. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of training that you need to develop in order to progress in weightlifting. Um, and, yeah, in order to do that, visualization. So um, you can research, you know, visualization techniques if you want. I know they do have videos on YouTube, which are really good. Um, but I would say do that as often as you can. You know, start off with, you know, three times a week, and then it will eventually become – almost like a default, you know, before you go into a lift, you'll visualize it, you'll see yourself doing it, and you'll just, you know, recreate that. Mm -hmm. um, same with meditation, journaling, goal setting. You know, don't don't try and, you know, bite off more than you can chew. So if you are snatching, say, 60 kilograms, don't now try and snatch 75 kilograms. Work up in increments. You know, and visualize yourself doing that. Work with the, the two kilograms, the one kilograms, the halves, you know, because all of that collectively will add up and will actually get your confidence up as well. You know, mm -hmm. snatching 62 is, is heavier than snatching 60 at the end of the day. Yes. So I would definitely, you know, say that. Like, don't, don't put yourself back by not working on your mental. Prepare yourself for what you're about to do. Give yourself every advantage you can when you are doing weightlifting. I don't know. What what do you think? Yeah, I, Giselle, you probably hit the nail on the head there. You're spot on with, you know, weightlifting is such a belief thing. And, you know, I've seen athletes, and this has probably happened to every single weightlifter out there, they can hit a certain weight. And if that weight is your max for the day, it can be, for example, 80 kilograms, you will literally put one kg more on the bar and you mess up. Totally. You do not even look like an athlete that does weightlifting when you do that 81 kgs. Like athletes completely lose it. Their pool is wrong. Um, you know, just the approach is different. Everything is so different. And that all comes to, uh, you know, how you actually believe in yourself when you're going into that weight. Because it's not that you're not physically capable. It's literally because, um, you know, you go to that weight and you think you believe and your mind thinks that you are ready or you tell yourself you're ready, but you are actually having a little bit of doubt. And in weightlifting, it's one of those sports. And, you know, there's many sports out there that is so technical that you can literally have, you, you can, yeah, you must have zero doubt. If you have the slightest bit of doubt, you can totally mess up your lifting, like I said, because it's so tactical or technical, sorry. Um, and like one other thing is also, you know, like um, not just, belief um it could also be um because this athlete didn't really specify you know um from what way to what way things start to get difficult mm -hmm. but with weightlifting itself you know if you have a problem where um going heavier is a problem it could also be that your jumps are too big um mm -hmm. so maybe that is a way to get yourself um mentally a bit more prepared to do the heavier weight so say you want to do 65 snatch and your max is 60 um you know, go if go 61, then go 62, then go 63. If all of those is one kilogram um, personal base, 
it's already mm -hmm. one step closer to you hitting that goal weight. Um, and the thing is, at the end of the day, you know, it's those small steps that's going to make sure that you, you know, reach your, your end goal. And the thing is, like I said, with weightlifting, because it's so technical, I mean, I've gone through it. Um, I had my, my pre, like a few years back, I had like my plateau of hitting 90 pages in the snatch. And I just mm -hmm. could not get 90. It was like I had this barrier. I could get 88, 89, 90, mm -hmm. I missed. 90, I missed. So uh -huh. what I did is I literally went every single week. My coach and I went, we like said, okay, one kg increments. And we literally did that every single week for I think like six weeks. And then I got 91. And then I got 92. And then I got 93. At 90, everything over 90 felt exactly the same for me. Like 90, 91, 92, 93, it didn't even feel different. And it's because in my mind, I said, mm. one kg, you know, kind of what, what one kg. And we didn't hit it all like one shot. Um, we literally went like weekly. So we did that one kg increment. And, you know, it might sound like, oh my gosh, how am I going to, you know, if I do one kg, it feels like it's, it's boring and it will take a long time. But trust me, in weightlifting, if you've been doing it a long time, if you increment, if you get an increment of one kg or two kg personal base each year, it's massive. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, one other thing that I would like to add also is when an athlete starts to mess up in their lift, is it could also be a reason that they get overly psyched up. Um, you mm -hmm. could be, you know, a certain amount amount of psyched up for your lift, your your lift that you got, the lift that looks strong, it looked explosive, your technique was good, your coach was totally happy, you were totally happy, you know, it felt flawless. Then all of a sudden you add a certain amount of weight and your whole approach changes. You um, get so psyched mm -hmm. up and your breathing starts to change and your breathe, your heart rate isn't, um, you know, your heart rate is super high and your heart rate and breathing isn't in sync. And, you know, you go to the bar and all of a sudden you're more aggressive and you stomp your feet and you grab that bar. And it's a total different athlete to the athlete that actually, you know, that the previous lift. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> I saw your comment there. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, being overly psyched up is definitely a massive problem in weight. Too. And, you know, um, that is something that you can practice. Like you said, with visualization. Um, visualization is a big, you know, a, a big and great exercise that you can do that makes a massive difference in an athlete's ability to perform that skill. Because like you said, you visualize it to such an extent to like when you actually do the weight, it feels like it's, you've done it before, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then another thing is if you get too stressed out and too like anxious and too psyched up, focus on your breathing, you know, do your breathing during your training, you know, get your heart rate down, get yourself focused. Um, don't change your approach to what you did in the previous set. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, that advice and like the advice that you give, I think, you mm -hmm. know, getting happy to actually start to progress, that's definitely a start. 100%. And I couldn't agree more with what you're saying about, you know, uh, don't change the way you do things because I think it's also really important to understand that training is training, competition is competition. Yeah. You know, um, especially in, in a sport like CrossFit, I think it is very important to realize that not every single training session is a competition or, you know, um, you don't, you know, it's not meant to get all the PBs and everything. Like you're there to practice things. Yes. So the more yes. consistent you can be in the way you walk to the barbell, you know, the, your setup, your breathing, everything, that consistency is practice. And then by the time you get to those heavier weights, it's it's so ingrained in you that you don't approach it differently because you've consistently practiced that. So I think definitely it's important to understand that you're practicing skills and you're practicing strength. And it's not every time you go to a barbell, you're going to, you know, pull it for a PB or anything. Exactly. So I think that's yeah, that's very interesting. Very good question. Okay, Marina, next question uh, we have. Is it all in the mind all the time when you do your sports? I'm assuming it's any sport or is it specifically weightlifting, like uh, your sport? <laughs> so I think that this means um, all sports. And the nice thing is, like with this question is, you know, so many athletes think that, you know, it is all in the mind and it definitely isn't all in the mind it's it's definitely a combination between mind and body and when those two 
are not in mm -hmm. sync, unfortunately, you will not perform at your optimal level. Um, mm -hmm. So I would definitely say, you know, you get some coaches out there that if an athlete misses a lift um, or if an athlete has a bit of a bad day, they all just like, you know, uh, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. You know, you didn't believe in yourself. Um, Yes, it definitely is important. You need to believe in yourself. You need to feel confident. Um, you need to go there and believe in yourself. And I also believe, you know, the people around you, like your support system, um, they are just as important to help build you up to be a success. Um, you know, your, like I said, your coaches, it could be your, your mentors, it could be um, your family, the people around you, you know, um, your partner. Um, those people also play a big role in you know making you feel confident and believing in yourself um but yeah when it comes to sport itself like if you have an injury um you cannot go and say the reason why um you did not succeed if this is a uh, waking thing or you know basketball or whatever um it's because it, it was in your mind even though um you know you you broke your ankle or you snapped your elbow you know you could have done it like you can't. There's unfortunately nothing that you can do when an injury like that happens, especially if it's on competition day. Um, so you need to make sure that just as much as you need to train your mind, you need to train the physical. So you need mm -hmm. to make sure your body is healthy, your body is strong. Um, you know, like all our uh, previous talks, you know, we talked about recovery. Um, so recovery is key. You know, when you've done all of those things, including your mental training, you become an athlete as a whole. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. don't let anyone ever tell you, like, it's literally, it's it's just your mind. Because mm -hmm. if you haven't trained for two months, like you were saying, you cannot go to the gym and all of a sudden snatch 80 kgs. I mean, that is ridiculous. That is literally like an injury waiting to happen. So you need to make sure that, you know, you go into your, your training with, a clever mind, you need to sit down, mm -hmm. write down your goals, you know, have have a plan to, you know, for what you want to achieve and, you know, um, tick it off one by one, one by one. Every step gets you closer to achieving your main goal at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not all in the mind, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a combination yeah. of everything. You need to be, you know, as a whole, like in, you can't be an athlete that, you know, your nutrition sucks, you don't care about yeah. your health, you've got flu, and now you go and compete at world championships, and yeah, you expect to perform at your, at your best level. So I don't know, Giselle, yeah. if you had anything to add to that uh, question. Yeah, I remember in the one chat we were talking, and you mentioned the whole holistic approach, you know, um, with the sleep, and the eating, and the training, and, and the mindset, and I think, you know, I think, a mindset is obviously very important. I think sometimes that can be the differentiating factor between, you know, uh, someone who comes first and someone who comes second. Um, I do think that it, it is something that is maybe um, underpracticed or overlooked in some athletes. So if that's the case, then I would definitely say practice that more because like you were saying, in order to be an, like a good, um, you know, um, uh, well-functioning athlete, your mind needs to be in the right space. Your body needs to be in the right space. You need to be sleeping right. You need to be eating right. Like if one of those things kind of fall off the wagon a bit, it's going to affect, um, you know, you as a person and, and you as an athlete. So there's no point in, you know, like you were saying, you know, being off training for two months or coming back from an injury and going into training and trying to prove something to yourself or someone else and going, I'm mentally tough. I can yeah. do anything, but your body is the <laughs> Yes, yeah. the whole muscle like, like, can definitely be, you know, it can cause you to get massive injuries and even in careers. Exactly. Like, there's a difference between being mentally tough or having good mental and having an ego. You know, sometimes, yeah. and actually more often than not, I don't know if you'll agree with me here, but being mentally tough means resting when you know you should be resting and you don't feel like it, you know, um, knowing you shouldn't really go for a weight if it could lead to injury. That's being mentally tough because you're making the hardest decision yeah. for the best outcome, you know. Um, so it's, it's also that a bit of that intelligence and I think change of perspective, like being mentally tough doesn't necessarily mean going 150% in every single training session. It's knowing mm -hmm. when to kind of pull back when you don't really want to, when to push when you don't really want to, 
that whole yeah. balance. But I agree perfectly with what you said. It's it's um, it's holistic. You know, the, there's no point in, you know, you have an injury and your mind is in the perfect place. You're not going to be functioning at yeah. your full potential. So try and balance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's so <laughs> sad because I've heard so many coaches over the years and I've seen so many amazing athletes, Giselle, like athletes that could really like, you can spot when an athlete can go far in life. And I've seen so many super amazing athletes out there that either stop the sport um, due to all the pressure from the coach um, or they've mm -hmm. actually quit because they just feel broken all the time or they get injured at the end of the day. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, and then, you know, coaches will be like, you know, you need to push hard. It's, it's in your mind, you know, like you come to training, maybe you've had like, taking into consideration uh, a whole day of school or varsity or work, um, maybe family stress that's going on. And, you know, you don't have to be like super soft with the person and be like, oh, you know, it's okay. Um, because you also get those athletes where you sometimes have to be a bit more tough with because they will come into gym and they'll just, they'll take chances, you know, whenever, you know, if the coach isn't looking, um, instead of doing six sets, they'll do five sets um, or four sets. And, you know, they'll think, oh, you know, um, I'm not really doing anything wrong. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, you're, kind of, you're cheating yourself. Um, so there's, again, there's like, you need to know as a coach um, or as a sports psychologist or a mentor, like you need to know your athletes on a personal level to know, you know, who are the athletes that you should, push even on a you know mental mental toughness type of approach uh, or those athletes where you know you do need to be like okay listen you've pushed yourself super hard for two weeks i know there's mm -hmm. something going on you know take one step back one step back is not going to make you not achieve your goals at the end of the day taking mm -hmm. that one step back would actually like help you achieve them because it's just it's giving you rest it's giving you recovery um yeah so um you know, you, you need to know, like, who you're mm -hmm. dealing with and know those athletes well. So I think that, you know, mm -hmm. it, might, it might be a good coach at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with that more. I really couldn't. <laughs> cool. Okay, the third question that we got, um, mm -hmm. how do you determine realistic goals for movement achievement? So this is quite an interesting question to think about. I actually quite enjoyed, like, playing around with it. And um, I hope I'm interpreting it in, uh, correctly, not incorrectly, correctly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, with sports, and especially very technical sports, um, let's use weightlifting because we're on that topic. You can't enter a gym and know how to snatch perfectly on the first day. There's a lot of little steps that you know, go into that. It's your mobility, it's your speed, it's your movement patterns, your body awareness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I find that the best way to tackle something like that is to break it apart, work on perfecting those little pieces because once those have been, you know, perfected, bringing it together, you've got your, your movement pattern down. So I would say really focus on you know, setting goals for those small achievements. So let me use a ring muscle-up, for example. So you want to do your first ring muscle-up or you want to get better at stringing together ring muscle-ups. By going and constantly just practicing a ring muscle-up, it's not going to fix anything. You need to break that down into the basic gymnastic shapes, so like your arch, your hollow rocks, you know, tightening the body, body awareness, and then slowly building that up to, you know, keeping on the rings, how does your body feel, are you keeping your body tight, then hips to rings, then transition, then dips, then eventually a full a ring muscle up. Yeah. So set goals for yourself based on those small steps. So say, for instance, you really struggle with hollow rocks, which is a difficult thing for people to do if they've never done it before, right? Focus on how you feel and how you move within that movement. So... Maybe your first week uh, goal is to do 20 unbroken. Then your second week is to do 20 unbroken for two sets, you know, and slowly build that up. Get, get those little foundation pieces better. Then you move on to the rings. Focus on, you know, doing five tip swings a day, every day, and focus on how your body feels and how your body's moving. Set little specific goals for that. Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. 
So if you were doing one of those things incorrectly, it could affect your full movements at the end. Yes. If you are paying full attention to every single one of those pieces and you are setting goals for that, then you'll eventually reach the full movement pattern of what you want to achieve. Um, it is really important to break things down and give those things the necessary attention that it deserves because everyone wants to go and do the cool stuff and, you know, all the fancy things and everything. But, um, yeah, our crew is in the background. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning about sports psychology. Yes, exactly. um, <laughs> Very wise, buddy. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I would definitely say break it down, set goals for those uh, specific progression movements, mm -hmm. and then you'll find that once you have mastered those progression movements or at least become more proficient at them, then – you'll be able to do the full movement without even thinking about it. That's what yeah. I found. I don't know if, if that's what you feel as well. Um, no, I definitely agree, Giselle, because the thing is, you know, to reach point Z, you know, you can't go from A to G to, you know, you jump like that. You need to go through the step to get to, you know, your Z. You have to go to step A, B, C, D. Unfortunately, you know, there's, there's not a, a sport really out there that if you want to master that sport, there's no shortcuts. And, you know, mm. sometimes it's difficult for people to understand because they get frustrated with themselves and they feel like they are not good enough and they get, like, discouraged. And, you know, I think also, again, that's where, like, a good coach comes into play because that coach will tell them, listen, this sport is highly technical. These mm -hmm. athletes that you are watching and you say you want to be like them, they've been doing the sport for 10 plus years, you know, even 15 years. So you need to realize that doing the sport for, you know, uh, one year or two years, it doesn't necessarily make you a world-class athlete. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take patience. And, you know, they and in sport, like I said, there's, there's no shortcuts. You have to go through all the basics. Like, yes, some people get there a lot quicker than others. Um, but if you are those athletes who have to work even harder to get there, I feel like more of a reward even. Um, and definitely when it comes to, you know, um, setting goals for, for movement or realistic goals, um, I would take this as something that you have to discuss with your coach and not make an individual mm -hmm. decision by yourself. Um, because making a decision by yourself, it's, you know, it, you will come to, like, you'll do a movement and say, oh my gosh, like, you know, I felt like I felt, my movement felt good. I felt strong. Um, I've been doing the sport for like a year. My goal is I want to go to Worlds next year and I want to win. So, you know, that's obviously an example of a very unrealistic goal. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you're like the superhuman person that's going to do a sport for such a short time to become a world champion. Um, but you know, this is, you have to discuss it with your coach. Um, your coach will have the best answer for you. That's why it's so important to have a good athlete coach relationship. And I'm sure you will agree with that as well, because, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes as an athlete, even when you feel a little bit demotivated and you feel like you're not achieving your goal, you could actually still be on your way to achieving your goal without knowing it. You might have had one or two bad sessions, which at the end of the day, the fact that you showed up and you trained, is already like it's a win um and sometimes you just have to hear the coach say this to you and be mm -hmm. like listen you have not taken away from us achieving you know x amount of goal that we want to achieve you know in like one month or two months time um it's literally um you know this is the goal we are working for um this is the goal that i believe you can do um, and this is also the goal that you should believe, you know, you can do. Mm -hmm. And I also believe with this thing, a coach can also cause harm because I've also seen coaches out there who have said, I will get you to lift X amount of weight. I will get you to squat 200 mm -hmm. kilos in the next six months, you know, and the athlete is squatting like maybe 110, 120. And realistically, that athlete could maybe in like a year or so, you know, improve 10 or 20 kilograms if they're still like, um, you know, intermediate in the sport. Um, but also creating that much of like enthusiasm in the athlete, telling them they're going to squat 200 kgs. And then when the athlete doesn't reach it, what ends up happening is the athlete feels 
super demotivated. They feel like quitting. They feel like they're not good enough. It breaks their self-confidence. Um, so you should take this approach very carefully and, you know, mm -hmm. build out the athletes, you know, work together with them, um, set realistic goals and also like goals that's, that's attainable, you know, but also mm -hmm. you don't have to set goals that are under, you know, under par where, yeah. the athlete, you know, it, it's too easy for the athlete because then boredom comes along with that. And you also don't want to get the athlete to be bored. You still want them to work hard, you know, not just on the field or, you know, on the platform, but also working hard on their recovery, especially if they want mm -hmm. to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mona, I just need to let the dog out quickly. She's just crying oh, at the door. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys, for those of you who have joined us now, um, feel free to ask us any questions, uh, sports psychology, mindset, mental skills questions. Um, yeah, and join into our questions. Yes, perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, just to add on that, um, just with the whole coach thing, um, I think what you said was so amazing about how you need to talk to your coach, obviously assuming you have a good relationship with your coach and um, your coach is positive, you know, um, with your training. But it's also really good to see things from a new set of eyes as well. You know, like sometimes when, when you're involved in the situation, you can only see things from your perspective. And like you said, you feel like you might not – be progressing or you're not seeing as many positive things but from the outset you know it could look completely different so I think um, definitely a new you know a new pair of eyes is is good especially from your coach who knows what your goals are and like you said that constant communication um, very productive okay Mona how would you overcome a fear of movement as you have been injured by it like a deadlift um, this is actually one of the questions I got yesterday. Um, and I believe this is such an important question because there are so many athletes out there that's been in this situation where they have gotten injured and they try and come back either way too quick, um, or they come back and they feel so demotivated and, um, you know, they feel like, a failure and they feel like they're never going to reach their goals and again athletes end up quitting or stopping and um, you know it's sad because that injury doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end of your career it could be a small setback um, but there's so many ways that you can deal with it um, especially if it's an a, a injury that is not so major that's why it's very important to make sure that when you have an injury to go and see a professional um, you know I will never say to an athlete you know if they've got pain or they tell me they've got any, anything where there's, you know, it's swollen or um, it's bruised or, you know, the athlete can't perform a movement because of this, um, you know, we'll always give the athlete a little bit of rest. But then at the end of the day, you know, do the wise thing and go and see a professional that can actually like really tell you exactly what is going on. Go for scans, you know, let them assess, you know, what's going on because it could even be um, – something in your movement patterns and you know them fixing um the way you move to make sure that you also don't get injured again um mm -hmm. and definitely with this question i think it's so important um with you know the questions we answered previously visualization um when you are injured um you know <laughs> tell james i said hello hey, ricky i'll tell james <laughs> thanks <laughs> um yeah so you know, visualization is super important. Um, you need to see yourself, you know, get back to, you know, your healthy, strong state. Um, you need to visualize, mm -hmm. you need to visualize the new weight that you want to lift, you know, the, uh, a new personal base, you know, something that you were going for, something that was potentially the thing that was holding you back. And maybe before that, that's when you got injured or maybe on that weight, you know, it, it's where the injury came. Um, also, when you do your visualization training, um, and like I said, visualize, you know, use all your senses. Um, I also have a nice YouTube video on how to actually visualize. So you can check out my mental skills by Mona if you want to get, you know, all the step by steps. Um, but just to like give a brief, you know, you have to use all your senses when you visualize. Just like your physical training, um, mental skills training, like visualization takes time. You're not going to visualize once off and you are going to see 100% the benefit. Mm -hmm. um, you might actually feel um, 
already a difference when you start to visualize you'll feel more relaxed you feel more awake more energized you know so there's a lot of benefits that can come immediately but to really get the best out of your visualization it's you know it's practice 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 um like i said um visualize yourself you know not just lifting that big weight but actually visualize yourself getting healthy um mm -hmm. pre injuries that i've had um you know i've literally visualized my body healing um yeah. <laughs> and i don't know there's people out there who will say you know it's not true it won't work this and that but i can promise you that i've i've gotten through some quite a few injuries in my career from doing weightlifting for 20 years um and it's definitely made a difference i came back to my weights like literally not even long after that you know competing in big competitions going on training international training camps and then hitting new personal pace um because of yes i was doing all the rehab that i had to do but i was doing tons and tons of visualization um mm. another thing that can also happen when an athlete gets an injury is also the confidence tends to drop um so when your confidence drops i do recommend at that time while you are injured um and you know it, with a deadlift it could be you know your back or knees or hips or something like that um so work on something that you know can still benefit your training at the end of the day you know if you are i'm assuming that this person could be a powerlifter because they mentioned deadlifting um you know you can still work on your your bench press working on your upper body um you can do band rehabilitation stuff for your lower body um you can do tons of yoga do things where you can also see a benefit and then grab mm. the confidence from that um so you know have a like a little bit of a mental mindset um shift and focus on something else don't just focus on the fact that you're injured it's definitely it's not the end of the world um Ooh. you know it's going to take step by step to get you back to where you were like i said you have to get your make sure your prehab is done your rehab is done um like i said earlier your visualization all those things um but definitely to get that confidence back um get yeah. get even something else you know even if you don't have to completely rest um you know if being in the gym makes you happy still go to the gym but do other things um you know i i've been injured before where i would still go to the gym and i'll do you know a bit of a biking then do my rehabilitation exercise and just being in the atmosphere with all the athletes mm -hmm. and you know seeing them snatch seeing them clean and jerk squatting i believe that that actually helped me get a uh, better a lot faster because of the energy i was feeling also from the gym i was feeling a lot more happy i wasn't feeling down on myself um yeah so i would definitely suggest um those things for you know if you were injured to getting back to your you know your previous mm -hmm. state and realize that it will take time um but yes take it step by step day by day it is possible to get yourself back there um you know mm -hmm. you have to believe and you may have to make sure that when you go back to your training that you feel healthy you do not have that pain mm -hmm. anymore you don't want to go back and get re-injured mm -hmm. 100% and i think it's so amazing how all this mental work ties in so well with you know whether you want to achieve a pb whether you want to improve your technique whether you want to come back from an injury you know it it really is at its core very simple in mm -hmm. practice and um i couldn't agree with you more cuz you know i just came back from um a hip injury um luckily through lockdown so it was a perfect time to actually go through a rehab process and everything um but i did exactly that i um visualized i did meditation where it almost um felt like there was like a a healing like glow going over my hip and you know i would do that meditation almost every single day at a stage um just telling myself like my hip is strong my hip is healthy you know um writing down those affirmations every day telling myself that that's the case um and i also truly believe that that's what really helped me recover the, the way i did um and again like I, i think just change your perspective about it you know perspective is everything i think it it is very difficult when you're in the moment and you're the one that's injured and you're the one that can't train you know to your your full ability um like it is very easy to feel kind of 
despondent and un- unconfident and almost sad because you're not doing what you know you enjoy every day which is pushing yourself but the thing that i kind of um did throughout my recent rehab process is i just kept telling myself like i'm i'm getting stronger you know all the rehab exercises that i'm doing it's fixing deficiencies that i have so when i go back i'm going to be 10 times stronger than you know before i got the injury and for me that was something that that really motivated me and when i went back to full training that was 100% the case you know um i was a lot stronger than before i got the injury so if i never had that injury i probably would never have found that that you know hidden potential so i think definitely working on your perspective the way you see things you know another thing that's really helpful is just waking up and just being grateful that you're actually able to move you know be grateful that you you're able to go outside for a walk or you know do do the exercise that you can do um you know whether it's the rehab or the bike because a lot of people don't have that opportunity yeah. um so again i think realizing that opportunity and being grateful for that also really helps a lot um and another thing i would say is um i think especially in like weightlifting or powerlifting or crossfit um it is very easy to come back from an injury and rely on gear so like your weight belt or your knee sleeves and everything um i would suggest not doing that right no. so um i remember in high school i had quite a bad knee injury from netball it lasted about 2 years and i got so used to playing with the knee guard that the minute i ran out my knee guard it mentally felt like my knee was like super flimsy yeah and i was going to like break it or whatever but it was such a mental thing right and what i eventually realized is that by relying on this knee guard i'm taking away the opportunity for my legs to grow specific muscles and for them to get stronger by itself instead of relying on you know an external apparatus and i would definitely say the same thing for weightlifting and powerlifting you know be very careful about how much you use things like like your weight belt don't yeah. use it if you're lifting at 50% because if you're lifting at 50% and you feel a niggle like it's too sore to do it without a weight belt you need to go get that checked out and you need to stop because you you need to be able to build up that core strength that back strength everything so that when you are lifting at 100% you know you you aren't going to you know face the risk of injury mm-hmm. so i know it's very tempting to rely on that stuff when you go back from an injury but try not to yeah um that's that's what i would say yeah also maybe you know um on what you were saying now how how do you deal with the let me just get this again um how do you deal wait <laughs> my question's like kind of went away so i don't know if you <laughs> let me see if i can get there how do you deal with the frustration while um being injured or from an injury um like i said like and you can also add to this Giselle like being frustrated is probably part of the process i mean you're literally if you get injured and you're happy or just like oh you know it's life you know then you don't really care so much about that thing that you are doing that sport um so i think every single person if you work hard and training is even if it's your your me time and you go and train you know for recreational purposes or you're training to be an elite athlete when you are injured it's definitely super frustrated um but also then to go and you know either speak to your coach or go to a professional and then go and assess like you know or reassess like how did this injury actually happen you know go back to the drawing board see if it's a, you know a, from your technique that this injury came or you know you overpushed or um you know or like what is the reason or you could just have a freak accident like if you are mm. a hockey player or a rugby player or something like that you know it's not necessarily a technique thing that you're going to get injured you could actually be injured due to a tackle um yeah. you say you and your ankle you know your ankle went or knee went or something like that acl um so it is literally like being frustrated it's it's almost part of like the the grieving processes that you go through when you're injured um but then also like i said finding out why you're injured um and then 
trying to get solutions to not get injured again. And mm-hmm. then, you know, step by step, you know, focus on the rehab and stuff like that. Like I said, it, I think it's almost, it's unavoidable to mm-hmm. not be frustrated when you are injured. It's just, it's one of those mm-hmm. things because you care so much and you are on your way, you know, to either getting better or stronger. Or like I said, you know, training is just like your me time. Um, so injury is, yeah, it's not a nice thing for I think anybody. Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like it's part of the process, you know, if, if you are pushing yourself and you, if you are pushing your body to its limits, you are going to reach a point where you do injure yourself. And I think the important thing is knowing how to deal with that, um, yeah. knowing what's in your control and what's not in your control. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason, but you need to learn from it. Every single opportunity that you have, so say the injury, is an opportunity to learn how to deal with things, how to deal with stress. You know, um, like I said, focus on what you can control. On what you can't control, don't even think about it. And it's a lot easier said than done. I'm sitting here saying, uh, talking as if I went through my recovery process tear-free and frustration-free, but I definitely didn't. (laughs) Um, but you know, the thing is, is that you, you need to learn how to deal with those things. You, you know, don't be like too hard on yourself where, you know, you don't ever let yourself feel down or whatever, but you need to also be able to, you know, sometimes be like, okay, G, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Cause that's not going to help. Like, let's get up, let's go and do something productive or let's work on mental training while I can't train, you know, mm-hmm. let's build that up. Well, so that, you know, when I can go back to training, you know, that's all on the same level. Um, take control of the things you can control. The things that you can't, try your best to just not even give them a second thought because it's wasted energy that you could be using to recovering yourself. Yeah. Um, so, like you said, you are going to feel frustrated. Like, it is frustrating. But don't let it get the better of you. You know, you're an athlete who think of your character. So let that character show during during that recovery process, don't let an injury beat you kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think even sometimes those tears make you stronger at the end of the day. Um, It brought back now answering this question, it brought kind of back a lot of memories when I had my knee surgery. Um, I was going to say last year, but the years is so confusing now with lockdown. Um, (laughs) End of 2018, um, when I had the surgery on my knee, um, I was literally the day after, literally the day after I, it was still snowing and it was so, it took me like almost an hour and a half to get to the gym. I was hobbling along mm-hmm. with practice, um, but I was adamant. I said to James, I need to go to the gym and just be there and do some upper body training. I went like super light. I just sat on a bench and did all these like, for me, it felt like useless exercises, but to actually go back to the gym and actually train and not sit at home and you know, be down on myself. And then from that training, I went to the physio and I literally cried almost every single day at the physio because I was an athlete who was, if I was given a plyometric movement, I could do it. If I was told to jump on the highest box possible, I would do it without fear. I, I was my whole life like a monkey. Like I literally, I had no fear for jumping on things and climbing on things. And I think I'm still like that. I mean, literally like I was climbing trees the other day with, um, you know, my hmm. neighbors. Um, we went out to a country house and I was climbing the super high tree and I felt like, you know, almost like I'm a kid again. Um, yeah. And I'm happy to be able to do those things again. But, you know, sitting there and not even being able to do a simple exercise where my leg is straight and I have to just lift it a few centimeters off the ground, I couldn't do it. I such excruciating pain. I, at that moment, you feel like I must just quit. I, mm-hmm. there's no point for me being there. Like I'm never going to use my leg again. I'm a weightlifter. Everything is squats. My knee is like, you know, even after the surgery, my knee is messed up. I have zero mobility. Um, literally like weeks after that, when I got myself to do a full air squat, I was so excited. I was sending videos to my coach and my physio and it was such an achievement for me, but it was painful doing it, you know, but at the end of the day, I took the small little victories. And even though I was at the physio crying, I like, I finished my session. I went home and I went back the next day and the next day and the next day, because even though I had those feelings then, I still at the back of my mind, Olympics is there. 
So I wasn't going to let that injury stop me as much as I had my doubts as well, um, which I think again is normal. I was still like, you know what? I'm this athlete. I'm a, I'm a fighter. I'm not a quitter. Mm-hmm. You know, I never quit no matter what, you know, like I'll get through this injury. Um, you know, if I know I'm doing the best I can every single day and if, you know, whatever happens at the end of the day, if, you know, Olympics come and I didn't make it or whatever, then I would still feel like I still did everything I could possibly to get there. And yes, I would still be sad, but I would still feel like I didn't sit back and feel sorry for myself. Oh, I love that. I <laughs> love it. Chills. Uh, <laughs> such a nice feeling. Um, okay, so our next question <laughs> that we've got, um, what are some tips you have for getting a good mindset and setting my own goals? So I love this. I, I love mindset and working on your mindset because I feel like it, everyone can do it. Everyone has the ability to be the best that they can be and the best that they want to be, right? Um, <laughs> soft-spoken <laughs> but strong. <laughs> I <agree>. um, <laughs> So I love the fact that anyone can work on their mindset, right? But the one thing I would definitely say, it's practice. Practice, 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 practice. If you see a person and you say to yourself, that person is just naturally confident, that's not the case. Confidence is developed. It's it's something that people work on. So that naturally confident person you're looking at over there, I can guarantee you they work on it every single day. Yeah. And the way you can do things like that is, again, it's simple in, 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 in thought, maybe a little bit complicated in practice because we're all human, but some of the best things you can do is, um, like we've spoken about it before, um, positive affirmation. So whenever you have a, a, a negative thought that comes into your head, kind of replace it with a positive one. Um, and... The, you know, it, it is hard sometimes because it is easier to be negative, right? But the question I always ask myself whenever I have a negative thought or whatever is, where is this getting me? What is the point of being negative? It's not going to get me anywhere. It's not going to get me what I want. Yeah, it might be a little bit harder to be positive because right now I don't feel like it. But if I'm positive, it can lead to X, Y, and Z. There's good things that come from it. And the amazing thing about affirmations is that if you just sit there and just repeat something positive to yourself, for instance, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, or whatever, if you just sit there and repeat that for like 10 10 times, you'll actually feel your mindset starts, it's actually like a a, a tangible thing. You can feel your mindset change and you start to see things differently. It's like you've put on a new pair of glasses. And um, what if you've... um literally like you feel sad or whatever or a little bit down and you do like maybe like a little guided meditation or something and they tell you to smile and you don't feel like smiling but you just you know give that little grin and all of a sudden you're like okay I feel actually a little bit better (laughs) yes exactly and it's that simple and that's what I love so much about it and so I would definitely say things like that I would say for mindset it's all about consistency and I would say it's about diligence as well. Like you need to hold yourself accountable. And one of the, the, the ways that I have found that it works for me is um, journaling. So I journal every day. Um, and when I journal, I write down three things I'm grateful for in the morning. Simple things. It could be the sun, you know, I'm grateful for the sun. Uh, especially now in winter, very grateful for the sun. <laughs> um, so I write down three simple things I'm grateful for. Then I'll write down an intention for, for that day. So say, for instance, be more present in you know whatever I'm doing. And then I'll write down three affirmations. And those three affirmations for me, I keep them consistently the same every single day. Because again, it's that repetition. Get that into your brain that I am this, I am this, I am this. Um, you'll see I've got sticky notes everywhere like even on my mirror when I brush my teeth I've got you know little affirmations there so you know while I'm doing a menial task I'm looking at something positive um like you said meditation do do meditations that that can make you happy and 
the one thing I've also really found helps with developing a good mindset is being very aware of what you consume. And I'll talk about food, um, although food probably does <laughs> play a role in that as well. But be aware of who you surround yourself with. Are you surrounding yourself with people who are building you up, people who are, you know, holding you accountable, people who believe in you? Um, so, for example, Trav is very hard on me, which is kind of weird to think because he's my boyfriend and you expect him to be like, oh, gee, I'm so sorry you're having a bad day today. Like, come here. No, he's not like that. Um, you know, because he believes in me and he wants the best for me and he wants me to be able to rely on myself and my mindset to get myself yeah. out of tricky situations. Um, so be very aware of who you're surrounding yourself with. Be aware of what you're reading. Like, are you reading mindless, gossipy stuff? Or are you reading books that can actually, you know, help you improve your knowledge, help you improve the way you see yourself, the way you think, all of those things, and also what you watch. And it's very yeah. interesting because I think we spoke about this the other day, um, about the Big Bang and, okay. you know, um, <laughs> the feel-good <laughs> feel things. And things. You know, I know this might sound a bit extreme, but I used to love watching horror movies. Like, that was my thing. I'm That's what I did with my dad. I'm exactly the same. <laughs> love it. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually, I've noticed that I've started watching them a lot less because they actually don't make me feel good. You know, um, and it's things like that, like watch things, you know, like Big Bang that makes you feel good because that's positive energy that can be put into improving your happiness, improving your mindset, improving your confidence. Um, so I know that's quite an elongated question, um, but for developing a good mindset, I would say mainly those things. So um, practice positive affirmations, you know, always affirm yourself. Um, be aware of who you surround yourself with and be consistent, be consistent. Yeah. And, you know, be, be, hold yourself accountable. It's very easy to be like, I'm having a shit day. You know, let me just feel and sorry for myself today because I won't do it tomorrow. But then tomorrow comes and you're like, oh, no, I really don't feel good. It's, it's fine. One more day won't matter. Like, you know, hold yourself accountable. Like, you're a lot stronger than, than what you think, but you need to build that belief up. Yeah. Um, and to answer setting, you know, um, your own goals, I would say find something that suits you. I feel like everyone's goal setting process is personalized to what suits them best. Um, so the best advice I can give for that is write them down because if you have goals that are actually written down on a piece of paper, it makes it more real. Um, Maybe follow the SMART rule, so the specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time domain a kind yeah. of um, goal framework. That really works because <laughs> it's it, goal setting. Exactly. And it, it, it gets into those little details that you could overthink if you just said, you know, like don't make a goal of I want to get stronger. Yeah. You know, be specific. Say I want to improve my snatch by 10 kilograms by this day. And again, that's where the whole realistic, you know, measurable thing comes in. Um, and I think, you know, set intrinsic goals as well as ex extrinsic goals. Like, have fun with goal setting. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I've also really found helps me um, with the goal setting and the mindset, um, specifically to the mindset, sorry, going back on that, is speak in the present sense, right? So... Say to yourself, I am successful. I'm successful because, you know, I'm hardworking, I enjoy what I do, I like challenges or whatever. Because yeah. if you keep saying to yourself, I will be successful because I'm X, Y, Z, that, that feeling, that sense of achievement, you know, whatever success means to you, is always going to be in the future. And you're always going to be wanting to chase it. Um, so tell yourself now that you are what you want to be. Because mm -hmm. the only person that's stopping you from that is yourself and your own perception on that. Yes. And it's the same with the goals and stuff. You know, write goals that are obviously measurable um, and that you want to achieve in the future. So we have 14 seconds remaining. So. 
Oh no! Not to leave it with a quick. I don't know if you want. This is not a good one. <laughs> I think it's gonna pop. 